Hello, my fellow weirdos. Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're doing... Hang on. Wait for it. Book haul! Horror book haul. Uh, yeah, I, I am supposed to be on a book buying ban, but I can't help it if they're secondhand and they're super, super, you know, good value. Also, um, I've been um, sent a bunch of books as well. So I have like a ton here to show you guys. Um, I will link all the various books below for you, uh, so you can um, buy a copy if you fancy it. But let's dive in. Okay, first up was a purchase of my, my own. I got this in um, a little charity shop for 50p. It is from a Buick 8, of course by the wonderful Stephen King. I've never read this one, so uh, there is a terrifying secret shrouded in Shed B in the State Police Barracks in Statler. Statler? Or Statler? Uh, I'm going to go Statler, Pennsylvania, a secret witch for the past 20 years has drawn the trippers terrified yet irresistibly tempted to look at its beautiful chrome fenders, silver grill and exotic exhaust system. Now young Ned Wilcox has started coming by the barracks, mowing the lawn, washing the windows, shoveling snow. It's the boy's way of holding on to his father, recently killed in a strange road accident by another Buick. One day Ned peers through the windows of Shed Bay and discovers the family secret and like his father, Ned wants answers. He deserves answers and the secrets begin to stir. Um, so yeah, no, I haven't actually heard much about this one, to be honest. It's another good old thick one by Stephen King. God, he loves a thick book, don't he? Uh, so yes, I'm excited to read that. Oh, okay. Next up, we have Grady Hendrix's The Final Girl Support Group. Um, I bought this one, I pre-ordered it yonks ago, and it just arrived the other week, and I literally read it in two days. So I'm going to do a separate review of this one. But this is essentially about a support group. For final girls funny that um oh god look how shiny i am i'm so sweaty there's a heat wave in in north ireland and i'm dying i'm dying anyway uh we have the survivors the final girls from various different horror movie um you, you'll recognize them and they meet to support each other through what happened to them and it's been 30 years of them doing this and now one of them's been murdered and all this stuff starts happening to the others and it's a race against time because somebody some killer is targeting final girls and um, our lead character Lynette needs to stop them before more people lose their lives yeah, really, really good. I really recommend it. Like I said, I read it in like two days. Uh, next up, we have Folk Magic and Healing, An Unusual History of Everyday Plants by Fez Inkwright. This was kindly sent to me um, by Liminal11. And can we just like... I adore the wee illustrations in this book. So this is obviously, as it says, is about folk magic and healing with plants and things like that. Something I've always been very fascinated about. My grandmother um, is one of those green fingered people who could make anything grow and she knew everything about plants and wildflowers and all the healing properties of them and stuff. So I'm really looking forward to um, to reading this. Um, so thank you so much to uh, Liminal 11 for sending it to me. Keep an eye out for a wee review of it. I'm just adding it to your pile over here. Um, next is another little charity shop find. It was actually my friend Roberta, shout out Roberta, who found me this in a charity shop. It's James Herbert Haunted. It was the cover that drew it, drew her to it and was like, this looks like a Marie book. And it is. So, uh, plot. David Ash, the psychic investigator, is invited to Edbrook, a remote country house where an alleged haunting is taking place. There he meets the Mariel family, two brothers, Robert and Simon, their younger sister Christina, and their aunt Nanny Tess. Ash is renowned for his dismissal of all things supernatural, having exposed many fake mediums in the past, as well as invariably finding natural causes for so-called psychic phenomena. He has a deep psychological reason for refusing such unearthly occurrences, but at Edbrick there is a mystery which cannot easily be explained. Over three hideous nights of terror, David Ash is forced not only to reevaluate his beliefs, but also to confront the enigma of his own past. There are games to be played at this place, nightmarish pastimes of a deadly and maleficent nature, and only when they are done Sorry, the only when they are done will Edbrook's dreadful secret be disclosed. So yeah, thought that sounded cool. Obviously, anything to do with haunted houses, you guys know I'm like a big fan of that particular trope. So had to have that bad boy. Had to. Uh, then we have a little throwback. Uh, I found this in a charity shop for ten p, and it's point horror. Um, when I was a teenager, I 
ate these books up. I can't even remember if I read this one. Um, I'll probably know once I start reading it, but I loved these books when I was a kid and I've decided to start collecting them again just for like nostalgia's sake when I come across them in charity shops. So obviously I had to get this. Uh, so it's called The Watcher and it's written by, oh, I'm so sorry, Leal Litke. I'm terrible with names. Catherine Belmont watches her favourite soap opera Lost River every day. She likes to imagine that she's the beautiful Cassandra Bly, the star of the show with gorgeous boyfriends, lovely clothes and her own red sports car. Don't we all, darling? But little by little, in strange, frightening ways, her life really does start to echo the characters. Catherine finds herself nervously rushing home to watch the show each day to find out what will happen next in her own life. And it's not so great being like her anymore because someone is watching her every move and somebody wants her dead. So, yep, sounds good. Definitely going to have to read that just for a little bit of fun. You know, I love the point horror books and the point crime as well. I read a lot of point crime. Okay, point crime. I can speak. Another charity shop find. A pound. Can you beat it? Susan Hills, The Woman in Black. The classic gothic lit um, story. Everybody knows this one. And um, the movie, I have to say, is excellent. Uh, Arthur Kipps, a junior solicitor, is summoned to attend the funeral of Mrs. Alice Drablo, the sole inhabitant of Eel Marsh House. The house stands at the end of a causeway wreathed in fog and mystery, but it's not until he glimpses a wasted young woman dressed all in black at the funeral that a creeping sense of unease begins to take hold, a feeling deepened by the reluctance of the locals to talk of the woman in black and her terrible purpose. I'm excited to read that. I've never got around to reading the woman in black before, so really looking forward to that. When I saw it was a pound, I was like, yes. Um, I also really like that edition. It's just a pretty like font such a nerd okay another pound find christine stephen king one i haven't read but as usual stephen i love you and i love your writing but can we like can we tone it down sometimes can we have some books that aren't door wedges or weapons of mass destruction anyway uh christine was eating into his mind burrowing into his unconscious uh, Christine is a blood red fat finned and was 20 her promise lay all in her past greedy and big she was Annie's obsession to 58 Plymouth Fury broken down but not finished there was still power in her a frightening power that leaked like sump oil staining and corrupting a malign power that corroded the mind and turned ownership into possession everybody knows the Christine storyline I need to take that sticker off can we just side note if you work in a bookshop please don't do this Please, please don't do this. This is torture to me. Torture. I'm just saying. Okay, another charity shop find. This was 10p. And I, I'm i kind of like thinking about the environment a lot at the minute. I've been watching a lot of documentaries. Um, basically becoming fascinated and horrified with how we are essentially, you know, destroying the world to the point that we're all going to die. Um, not my generation, not even my daughter's generation, but I think my grandkids are screwed. You know, it's really terrifying. So anyway, this is James Lovelock, The Re Revenge of Gaia. So apparently this is the most important book ever to be published on the environment. Uh, he shows how humans have exploited the planet for thousands of years without counting the cost and how Gaia, the living self-regulating Earth, is now fighting back. Written after a lifeline engaged in the science of the Earth, this is a testament to one of the giants of environmental thinking. So um, it's not the biggest book in the world, so I thought it would be kind of an interesting read. God knows when I'll get around to it, but for 50p. Another Stephen King charity shop find 50p and it's a hardback. Again, do you see what I mean? Look at this. Look what this sticker has done. Look. Evo. This is The Dead Zone. Another one that I haven't read. There's so many Stephen Kings I really need to get around to. Um, he's so prolific. Again, though, that is a fat whopper. So I'm going to have to be, be really in the mood. Meet Johnny Smith, a young man whose streak of luck ends dramatically in a major car crash, followed by blackness a long, long time ago in cold limbo. When he wakes up, life is turned upside down. His fiancée has met someone else and Johnny is cursed with the power to perceive evil in men's souls. He's had these hunches since he had an ice skating accident as a child. Now he has an ability to see into the future, an ability which will bring him into a terrifying confrontation with a charismatic, power-hungry and dangerous man. I do really need to get around to that one. I kind of just pick up uh, Stephen King in between my other raids, but I've got like so many books to read. It's insane. I am reading a little bit better again. The, the like... The reading slump is is gone. Like I read the final girls in a couple of days. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Life is a bit of a kick in the crotch, but you know we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. Next we have Mark Edwards' The Hollows. This was sent to me by Amazon Publishing and Hoopla um, to promote on my Instagram. It was a paid promotion, but um, I'm not being paid to promote it here. 
Um, it does actually genuinely sound like so good, by the way. Uh, with his marriage over and his career in freefall, journalist Tom decides to reconnect with his 14 year old daughter, Frankie, des desperate to spend precious time together. Now that they live an ocean apart, he brings her to Hollow Falls, a cabin resort deep in the woods of Maine. From the outset, there's something a little eerie about the place, strange whispers in the trees, wind chimes echoing through the forest. But when Tom meets true crime podcasters David and Connie, he receives a chilling warning. Hollow Falls has a gruesome history 20 years ago this week. A double slaying shut down the resort. The crime has never been solved and now the woods are overrun with murder-obsessed tourists looking to mark the grim anniversary. It's clear that there's something deeply disturbing going on at Hollow Falls and as Tom's dream trip turns into a nightmare, he and Frankie are faced with a choice. Uncover the truth or get out while I still can. So that sounded really good and intense. Um, so yeah, on the TBR pile. Um, this is another book, again, sent to me, Amazon Publishing and Hoopla for a paid promotion on Instagram. I'll always be clear with you guys when I've been sent a book and if it was paid or if it was just sent to me. People just, I literally just get books delivered and I'm like, oh, thank you. So thank you for sending me the book. Um, again, though, not being paid to promote it here. Um, this is Dying Inside by Damien Boyd. And it's a D.I. Dixon novel. So there's a few of these. So newly promoted D.C.I. D Nick Dixon. I'm glad that I didn't mix up his name. Nick Dixon is stuck behind a desk when the peace of the Somerset countryside is shattered by a spate of sheep killings. Dixon recognised a sinister pattern. The animals have all been slaughtered with a crossbow, the power increasing with each kill. It seems whoever is responsible is practising, but for what? Then the owner of a yacht that capsized on a suspected drug run is found dead, pinned to a tree by four crossbow bolts. Convinced that the killing is a gangland execution, the organised crime unit take over the investigation. Dixon is sure the motive lies elsewhere, but is forced to watch from the sidelines until another body is found. Leading a major investigation team at Avon and Somerset Police Headquarters, and with internal politics threatening to thwart him at every turn, Dixon must find the murderer before he kills again. And again. Um, I love, like, whodunit, serial killer, police books. I, you know, I've been raised on crime fiction, thanks to my mother, so... Another interesting one there. And finally, this is the final one that I've been sent recently by Amazon Publishing and Hoopla. Again, pay promotion over on Instagram, not here. Um, it is a cut for a cut by Carol Wire, which is a Detective Kate Young series book. Um, this is a follow-up to, um, what was the first one called? An Eye for an Eye. So An Eye for an Eye, and then this is a cut for a cut, and then I think there's going to be a third one. So uh, D.I. Kate Young can't trust anybody, not even herself, in the bleak countryside around... Blythefield Reservoir, a serial murderer and rapist, is leaving a trail of bloodshed. His savage calling card, the word mine, carved into each of his victims. D.I. Kate Young struggles to get the case moving, even when one of the team's own investigators is found dead in a dumpster. But Kate is battling her own demons, obsessed with exposing Superintendent John Dixon and convinced there's conspiracy running deep in the force. She no longer knows who to trust. Kate's crusade has already cost her dearly. What will she lose next? When her stepsister spills a long, buried secret, Kate realises she found the missing link. Now she must prove it before the killer strikes again. With enemies closing in on all sides, she's prepared to do whatever it takes to bring them down, but time is running out and Kate's past has pushed her to the very edge. Can she stop herself from falling? Um, when I posted this, actually, I had a lot of people tell me that An Eye for an Eye was really, really good. So um, I'd be tempted to get it myself, read it, and then read this one because it does sound really good. Like I said, I love a crime book. So that's it, guys. That's my massive horror haul that I got almost all horror and dark crime books there except for two exceptions so yeah <laughs> you can tell my jam can't you but anyway um i'm gonna go and melt like a candle in this heat um i can feel i'm already wilting like look at my face look how shiny i am like i powdered this up to hell okay i, I like powdered i put on makeup and it's just it's melting <laughs> i'm melting oh what a world what a world. Now I know how that poor woman felt. Dorsey. <sighs> Killed her sister, stole her sister's shoes, and we're supposed to feel bad for her. Anyway, <laughs> if you have um, read any of those books, please let me know in the comments down below if they were good. It helps me kind of decide what order to read things in, although I usually just grab something random. Um, also, subscribe, like, comment anyway, even if you haven't read the books, so we can connect because that's what this is all about and that is me for now guys bye